on the new path to Jesus' trap. It was the hope of Pope John Paul II, expressed in the point 56 of the encyclical letter entitled Fides et Ratio. The reason of this sending the philosopher in search of the new path is uh, that uh, all the magistry of uh, the church also already explored the path of the faith, bringing uh, to believe in Jesus. If the Pope sends the philosopher in search of this new path, it's because of the ignorance of the Pope of it. It must be a new way, starting not from the faith, but from the reason and from its ability to investigate about what is truth or not. Therefore, we have two contests in which we can investigate. One, the philosophy. Two, the science, that can be linked in one alone, called philosophy of science or epistemology. We can proceed separately and afterward to link the two different shapes of the truth in philosophy and in science. In philosophy, Jesus called the Father the fundament of the to be, that in Elia had his epiphany five centuries before Jesus, through the three big master called Xenophanes, Parmenides and Zenon. This sort of invasion of the being of I am where I am, Yahweh, in philosophy, is exactly what the Pope John Paul II had opened. It had already happened in Italy, at the base of a mountain called Stella in Italy, and that means star, just like that of the nativity chain, as the three big master arrived from the Orient. Therefore, Jesus, already in the same moment of his divine birth, is celebrated by St. Matthew like the advent of Yahweh in the philosophy, a matter that cannot be considered as a, a random event, and that the divine providence put in great evidence when a few tens of years before the first year 1000, exactly the tomb of St. Matthews was founded in that Elia town of the advent of Yahweh in philosophy. But also Pythagoras, who was a teacher of mathematics and philosophy at Crotone, always in Italy, opened the Jesus trust about a God who, as a, a poor, is talent the number. Jesus precise, precise, precise that God was one and three, being so binary as the middle value of a couple that he named, formed by the Father and the, the Holy Spirit. In the philosophy, already had been postulated the existence of the double context between the first cause of everything, God, and the general effect. The idea of Jesus of a fundament binary, but 
which is one alone, God, belongs to the philosophy of Jesus, who teaches by taking his ideas just from the Holy Spirit of the divine knowledge of the truth. Also, if it is a revelation, the fundamental couple of two divine talents possessed by one only God today can be studied and compared with the truth in our process. The creation of the life in every event. requires always a couple of parents, but also in the material field everybody is made always by matter and antimatter. The philosophy of Plato had investigated already the unit, but it was the result of the ratio between two entities. Two centuries after Christ, Plotino affirmed that the one as the first one of the two emanation, equal and contrary. In their middle, there is Jesus Christ, who affirms the simultaneous to be, as of the one, as of the two opposites, of the Father and of his Son. Nobody, in a so important matter, has noticed the new idea of Jesus, of the coexistence of one and two, as three transcendent talents from fundament of all the reality, while the philosophy does battles between the being and the becoming, and it is believed the impossible coexistence of the opposite truths, Jesus affirms this apparent nonsense, and does it in a way so complete that arrives to call the first what is the last and vice versa. When Jesus affirms that who desire to save his life, in that same instant they lose their life, Jesus makes the philosophic description of the fundamental contradiction placed at the base of the existence. And if you affirm that this is not a dissertation admissible in the matters of the philosophy, because it is not a fruit of reason but of the nonsense and the stupidity, I say that the level of philosophy of Jesus is so divine that it transcends the same sense of what seems to have a sense. But this apparent nonsense of who affirms that a thing is not that thing, but its contrary, today is verified by the physics, when it affirms that the action is of the reaction, like the up of a a wave is of its down. Today is well known that the reason of the dynamic of one is the inverse movement of minus one. Therefore, since after the up of the wave comes its down, every man that wants to be always more up, must lower himself. 
but this unusual thing said by Jesus in that ancient times in which everything was only itself has not found the philosophers ready to realize the extreme to be in advance of Jesus respect his time respect his age when the only master that was in Jerusalem among the followers of Jesus called Nicodemus went to him and posed the question of the real way through which you go in heaven Jesus showed his complex vision of the existence made by the action of the poor spirit that was intended as a sign of the observer of the five six and uh, the observed dynamic of the bodies in which uh, is properly the author's dynamic what uh, defines the unit of uh, the kilogram Jesus said to Nicodemo that only after the real obs observation of the dynamic of the soul it's possible to enter in the heaven it was affirmed to Nicodemus by Jesus with a double in verity in verity I say to you Jesus was saying the truth the divine and the transcendent truth that at the base of his material world there is that of the poor spirit but this transcendence was not something of nonsense but something equal but opposite not again matter but it's opposed the antimatter not again the flow of the mind in its reality today we know that is uh, the electricity in the brain but it opposed and today we know that uh, it is the magnetism Jesus was clarest with uh, Nicodemus since uh, he said uh, you have the desire to know the other world while you do not know how is made this of the reality so to can only do this to believe to me who from there have come it is here that the philosophy and the science of Jesus become epistemology philosophy of science Jesus said to Nicodemus a truth in which he'd have you believe because of the ignorance of those times about the full complexity of the world but today the desire of the Pope of the new path to the Jesus truth is opportune in the greatest possible size the gospel of uh, Saint John the third chapter in which is uh, scientifically explained the real way to go in paradise cannot be again considered like uh, it was possible to a Nicodemus it is not uh, an explanation transcended divine elusive no it is uh, the real explanation of the path the real path for bringing really man in paradise it's affirmed the necessity for every man of a trinitary observation of the same life the first path starts from the end of the life that is really our first beginning having origin 
in a probabilistic project made by what is only in power a zero and what is in unitary action as one. The coexistence of uh, a zero zero one one zero one zero zero z one as a string of binary orders forms our matter's character and all its material destiny. It advances toward the observer, placed in the utter of his mother, and in the moment of the beginning of the relative real life, it is all advanced, but in an invisible way. Now, in the second time, starts the sensitive life, and the, the observer observes all the string, transforming that project in an apparent corporeal life. This real path ends when the subject arrives to the end the completion of the project, it seems the death point, but it is not. In fact, while the subject has postponed the action to the reaction, they are simultaneous in the truth. So it is the truth that forces the opposed path the exodus of the life, is only a real conversion in the advancing and the vision of that project. It begins to be observed in the opposite direction, which is returning toward the beast. In the third moment of the same life, is finally perceived and understood that is a transcended project made by one omnipotent able to put everything in action and to annihilate that actions, bringing again everything into the probabilist infinite system named Almighty God. So, <coughs> this believing that could seem a poor philosophy based on imagination is posed strongly on all the knowledge of the science of today. The return of the antimatter and the, of the magnetism to the center of everything with their centripetal movement, is really moving, going back in the time, since the advancement is belong, is belonging to the electricity and to the matter, which move in centrifugal direction. But the same shines of today is not in possess of the know-how of Jesus because of the Big Bang theory which affirms that uh, a big explosion had uh, in uh, the beginning uh, the ability to oppose uh, it uh, to the gravitational centripetal forces. The so advanced the shines of today see the Big Bang as an opposition to the gravitation, and not as the normal perception, equal and contrary, existing between the matter and the observer's poor spirit. It seems that the intelligence of the reason in vain spoke through Galileo Galilei, when he revealed 
the relative law of action and reaction, the base of what was perceived and the sun rotating around the earth, while it was true the exact equal and contrary one. But uh, the philosophy of Jesus revealed as a thing in that age only to be believed is more more advanced of the comprehension of the science of today. In fact, not only the flight of the galaxies and the Big Bang, but all the movement of the bodies are depending on the movement of the poor spirit. The poor spirit is the engine of everything is perceiving in movement. This was in the poor essence the communication made by Jesus to the science through the revelation to Nicodemus. The science, on the contrary, believes in the evolution theory, in the fundamental becoming of everything existing before of the existence of the human species. The ideal battle between Parmenides and Heraclitus in the going on of the ages as had as winner Heraclitus. When a scientist proved the evolution of the spaces, the science has accepted completely the Heraclitus philosophy, having the certainty of an age in which the spirit was not existent. The poor spirit that Jesus posed as the engine of the matter movement did not exist, but his conceptions were existing. How is it possible that the shines, which knows well that the middle of the reality is perceived advancing on the base of the other half part, which is returning, how is it possible that it believes in the advancement of everything? The human philosophy is not is not coherent to its same fundamental principles, but not that of Jesus. In fact, the body center of every mass is not a movement in presence of two opposite passions of the masses in two opposite movements in the space-time. The very center of everything is motionless, so that the advancement in the future time and the return in the past time are only opposed derivation from the general motionless center of, of our spirit. We are able to suppose the future on the base of the past time, but both are only poor ideas created by a mind whose poor spirit is divine, that is able to generate ideas in himself. Every idea of the matter and of the spiritual context belonging the souls. But since this knowledge doesn't exist yet with its judgment existing only as a thing in itself, latching in its conclusions, it latches 
given the ability to realize what Jesus said about the philosophy that has been not yet discovered by the man. The Jesus philosophy about this world and about the other doesn't exist yet. Its context belongs to the faith, which today has no ability to imagine really what is the matter. On the contrary, Jesus revealed everything, sublining that he spoke in verity, in verity, and no more in parables. To arrive, to discover, this Jesus philosophy, said to Nicodemus, means a big, enormous step of the humanity, greater than that little great made by Angstrom on the moon. Jesus affirms the centrality of the poor spirit that he called the signed spirit, since a, a simple geometrical point of observation without any preconception is saint, not yet touched by the personal greatness of the character, a greatness full of preconceptions. The true poverty of spirit belongs to a poor ability to perception, without modifying nothing on the base of a personal greatness. It's a question of poor geometry regarding every point, which is without any space, also if it is already existing and called A, B, C, the point form perception of the spirit happens in the motionless point of all the masses, at the motionless point of their apparent two opposite advancing in the future and in the past. It is not strange the case of our eternal to be existing in the present time. We, through our analysis made by single component vectors, being poor points of view which exist placed in the simultaneous existence of all the eternity, are able to dissociate what is a unitary one. Our poor spirit does this dissociation by fixing three fundamental talents to make a volume. The space is built there where it does not exist yet. This creative talent belongs to our to-be fathers, able to realize three equal and contrary unlimited lines. One is the axis of the observation, that is only one point of space, but contains infinite ages of time, present in the depth of the time. Other two perpendicular axes form the plane of the real observation. One point one, without any space, is enlarged of ten of it in horizontal, and ten of it in vertical. 
10 times 0 is always 0. But uh, if we observe the thing in themselves, 10 is an enlargement of 1. So it is created a representative imagination, a perspective, able to generate a relative perspective world, which appears but doesn't exist, being always zero, the three axes x, y and z of the Cartesian representation of the world. We must know this. Everything that we are able to represent and that seems a representation is it a representation. The real possibility to represent our world through the four components, the three of Cartesio and uh, the T, the time, it means that our world is a representation of our mind. It is the fundament of the lesson that Jesus gave to Nicodemus when he said that uh, to can go in the heaven by first it is necessary to descend from the hig. Jesus intended to say that uh, it was uh, the necessity to make uh, rezoning ground ground stopping and being confused by a hig that is the even. This hig is a real situation from which it was possible really to descend. In fact, Nicodemus has well understood, since afterwards he answers as an old man to return in his mother womb. Since Nicodemus has understood that this hig from which to must descend was the future time, Jesus had been clear in his communication. But Nicodemus goes on and adds to born again here Jesus interrupts him and corrects by saying there are two directions in the same life that belong to the bodies and to the poor spirit. The death compels to be of every person to return on his real steps. These all steps are all always existent, depending only by the precedence between the observation of one step A and of the step near B. If we observe as first the A situation and afterward a second the B, we see the becoming B of the A situation. Now, the new truth introduced by Jesus' philosophy is that the apparent cause and its apparent first effect exist both as father and son in absolute. So everything is simultaneous and immensely differentiated, even if also everything is only one. The greatest new, the greatest of Jesus is this equation, one equal infinite. 
the absolute God is the immensity of every possibility, as equal and as contrary. It seems the contradiction existing between one and the infinite presence of the same one. The, this uh, infinite presence is reduced to three fundamental lines of action. They are the same three talents that uh, our poor spirit idealizes, being he and the essence of the infinite essence of God. So, when Jesus calls Father, the infinite, absolute God, and invites ourselves to call him our Father, he reveals that what is valid from him, the first song, is valid for every son of God. And this, my friends, is poor philosophy, immense philosophy, new philosophy, since uh, never before in the philosophy a man all over the world was arrived to call song of God is uh, in being existence and not in an abstract way generalized I am who I am therefore I also am Yahweh who said to Moses to be I am where I am. That of the being God is a personal invasion of the absolute in the reality. The verb to be, it too, can be in the active and in the passive form. So, while God is myself, is the action of God about being the soul of my character. The truth is that my soul is of God, but it is not only a possess of God, but it is a personal essence of God in the relative context of the real world. Is God that uh, lives in the world, in my person? When on the Calvary Jesus died, in the middle of two big thieves, they too represented the true big thief that is every man, when he appropriates of the God soul that is every soul which apparently is lived at the human discretion. The specificity of every man made of matter and of all its movement is exactly as that existing in every real representation that is showing the bodies and their adventures. But also in the theater, every apparent body and every adventure must be animated. The soul of the characters has no responsibility of the adventures, being of an actor that enters in the part and does it its part. In the same way, one of the goods of the God's infinite souls enters in our characters and makes his own the part assigned by it, the divine providence to him. 
there is no difference. And uh, like every actor <coughs> who interprets with fidelity the part assigned to him is really acting as a son. The free will of his father. Also Jesus recognizes that he is uh, sent by his father to do his free will. Every man enters in the free will of the Father and makes it his own with the greatest possible fidelity. But it is always the free will of the Father. Even if Jesus affirms himself to be the first Son of God, Jesus, also being the Son, hasn't it winner free will. When the time of the end is near, there is a fight between the free will of the Son and that of the Father, and Jesus affirms the primacy of the Father's free will. Once again, the fideist's interpretation of the scriptures doesn't allow to well distinguish and understand the philosophy of Jesus. If he is only sent, if his free will is correct only when it is the free will of the Father, how is it possible again to call, to call a gift the free will that man has understood to have had when it is that of operate modifying the single senior part of the life's drama? The fideist action which doesn't know no use of the reason doesn't arrive to understand that the free will that also the Son of God had as a divine gift refers to the passion of his soul, to the free reaction to the cross signed to him by the Father the free construction of the interior dresses of the soul possesses the freedom in absolute. No free will can be greater than that regarding the free construction of the personal God of the person. The immense gift of the Father, human to every son, is the real possibility that is allowed to every son to become the father of his father, in his free conscience. Can you understand the immense new introduced by Jesus in the dualism man-God discovered and displayed by the philosophers. It is in evaluation most important in this dualism and it is not noticed as it merit in the philosophy's context. The free will to elect the personal God was already noticed by Socrates when he said that God is the idealization of the human need. You, who are not students of philosophy, may think that 
Socrates said before. The same said afterward by Jesus. Oh, it is not true, huh? Socrates had considered God as he was an idea born in the human imagination, while the truth was exactly opposed. The men were interprets of the free will of God, having the personal free will of the interpretation of God, put in action through the same imagination of God, who God was, what were his desires. Jesus said of a father in love for all his sons, and that loves to be loved in the same creative way. So, in the Socrates' vision, God the Father is latching in itself. Notice, this is the vision of all the world of today. God seems to be not there and to be not here. A philosopher has noticed that God is died. The men of today think that the famous free will allowed to them refers to the movement of the bodies in this divine comedy. And so they justify the apparent inactivity of the Lord, who has allowed to the man the actions regarding real bodies and real matters. But this is not the thesis of Jesus. Jesus doesn't think to have the free will to change his destiny. And it is, and he is the son. It is not a question of greatness of Jesus' spirit, who, his godness, accepts the free will of the Father. Jesus is convinced to be absolutely commanded by the Father. All the Gospel of Saint John is full of uh, this goal of Jesus, referring uh, to his actions, in order that they all can know that uh, I have been sent by the Father. And when, for putting in consideration the violence of the faith, said, if you have a faith, you can order everything, and it happens. He spoke about the faith in God the Creator, present in everyone. When this faith is absolute, so big is uh, the identity of a man with God, that if the desire of the man are those of God, the creator of the history, those desires are already transformed in reality, before that they arrive to the knowledge. When Peter tries to walk on the water, and he seems able by fish, but afterward he loses his faith and cannot more. Nothing of this is made by the man. There is the, des des there is the design. In it, until Peter has faith, he is able to walk on the water. But the character designed of the man Peter without a big faith, is uh, so, when the fight 
of the create of the character of Peter dissociates himself by that of God, the character is no more able to be a God because of having done this personal dissociation in a word for Jesus to be able to transform the reality in a miraculous way it is necessary to be exactly one with the God creator now this is impossible if it is activated by the character while to God everything is possible until to make himself absolutely one with the character of his design. And I stop here for today. This new path needs attention. So I'll speak diffusely another time, putting the attention more to the Jesus truth in the scientific context. Goodbye.